When we were yet sinners, the Bible says, God died. So that's a done deal. And if you still get up and you're feeling shame, disgrace, you're looking at you instead of looking at the glory of God, I invite you today as um, your ministry through, through song or through the word of God to come closer to God. John 1, 9 says if we just confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. All is not some. All is not the stuff from this week or tomorrow. It's everything. God is good to us. As Jim was praying, he said, Lord, help us to see that we are blessed. Even the blessings we don't see. So as we do this uh, teaching, this session on vision, our prayer is that you see the blessings of God on your life. Not according to what you've done, but according to who he is. We serve a worthy God, and he is good. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. Welcome to Appointed Church. This is Appointed, where God is good. And we are too, because we are forgiven. We are the righteousness of God. Amen. Welcome today. We are so happy to have you here seated in person or online across the country. Amen. We are a church that loves God and knows that you are appointed and wants you to live out your purpose. Amen. Amen. Can we give a hand to our worship team? <laughs> church on Thursdays in the sound booth. We also keep praying. Awesome things are going on in our worship. We even have people coming for free service so they can stomp their feet and clap their hands and support our worship team as they are just continuing to grow, heal, and get ready to return. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love it. This is a church on fire. This is a church that's growing. This is a church that's giving. And if you want to be a part of that, then keep coming. Keep coming, keep serving, keep asking God how you are connected because we need you and we love you. Amen? Amen. A point of church has a seven-week cycle that we roll on according to the um, Spirit of the Lord through our visionaries, our pastor, Mike Paquin, and the elders who have come together. It's a seven-week cycle. We are on week three. It's our traditional service, worship, the word, fellowship. Um, and then we go home. Next week is Father's Day. It's also Community Sunday. So come on back. We're going to honor our fathers. We're going to eat good. You don't have to bring a thing. Just yourself. We're going to have barbecue. And we are going to get to know one another um, as modeled by Acts 2. Week 5 is our upper room service. We'll continue to um, study me, the gifts of the Spirit. Week 6 testimony. We're going to have um, some good news from one of our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And week seven is our communion service where we will have worship. Uh, we will fellowship together by taking the Lord's Supper together and then we'll do it all again. Our midweek services, um, we have Monday Boy Scouts. Tuesday we have home church um, with the packets. Um, that is 7 p.m. Yes, I think three years later. Um, Wednesday we have youth service. Young adults or parents of young adults, because the young adults are in the Ignite right now. Um, we are having youth service again, 6.30 here. Bring your young adults. Um, bring your youth. They're in middle school. They're learning amazing things in the Word of God. So that's this Wednesday. I'm also with Bible study here and restoration. And then we will be back uh, on Sunday again for week four, community, barbecue. Don't bring nothing. Just yourself. Bring a friend. Father's Day. Bring your dad. Come on, dad. All that stuff. Okay? Amen. Uh, any other announcements? Celebrations, birthdays, retirements? I know we got one close, but wait. Okay. Excited. All right. Uh, thank you again for coming. We're just blessed to have great leaders who love us and shepherd us well. Whose birthday is Tuesday? Whose birthday is Tuesday? Oh. It's ah. my birthday. And then Tuesday's oh. birthday is Saturday. Oh, there we go. So, all right. Big round of applause for Jimmy and Kelly. And the older Love you. We bless you for life. Amen. We're excited to share life with you. So, all right, y'all go ahead. Hug and kiss them, whatever you want to do. All right. Um, Pastor, you want to come on up? Y'all celebrate our pastor. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give me one second to shift here. Okay, as usual. 
and we'll probably know what's going to happen on Sunday. So this is one of those Sundays. Um, what I'd like to do on this Sunday, if you guys are okay with it, is instead of doing a Q and A at the end, um, we're going to do something different. So I've got three pieces of the sermon that I need to get through. Um, one of those pieces just came this morning, so you have to bear with me, okay? I thought the Lord wants me to share something with you, okay? And I believe this is a prophetic piece. Some people, um, this will register with them, and then some people it won't. And that's totally okay. I mean, anything's wrong if it doesn't register, all right? Um, but for some of you, I believe this will be a word um, for you and register with me. So, let me pray us in, and I want to get started with this, uh, what I believe is a prophetic word for us. And then we're going to talk about some leadership and mentoring and discipleship of this church. And then at the end, I want to show you what's available. What do we need? People ask, what do we need? So we have a PowerPoint slide. This is what we need, and this is where we are going. So there's no confusion. You can see exactly what our needs and what our desires for ministry are in the future. If you if you let me do a, a real list, I will give you a thousand things. Okay? So I had to stop myself. I had to shut down because it was just getting to be too ridiculous. So you guys okay if we take small bites? Please, if you're not okay, I'm sorry to be okay. <laughs> because we, we, we got to take small bites. It, 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 we can get ourselves into way too many things and get totally stretched and totally lose the vision. Because we're trying to attract all these people and build this big thing and telling you, let's just give me a minute. We're going to talk about that today. Okay? So, Father, thank you. Uh, thank you for this church. Thank you for everyone who is here. Father, I feel the hearts of the people are here for a reason. And God, I love that. Um, I believe people are here because there's a reason they're showing up and they're coming. Lord, you're bringing people from Ruskin. You're bringing people from all over the county uh, to come to this little church. And so that means there's a reason for them. And so God, would you help us to understand purpose, reason, why we are here, and what you are doing, Father, in this moment. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I want to start with uh, Ezra. Three. And we're going to see if we can get that up on the screen. This is my fault because this came the very last minute for me. I want to give you guys a quick discussion, very quick. A little bit of background history on the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Anybody familiar with Ezra and Nehemiah? Like one of those books you just don't read? <laughs> it's like, that's weird. It's just too much, too much information there. Okay, so here's the basics of what happened. Ezra and Nehemiah actually mirror each other. The books are very, very similar. From two different people, two different perspectives. Okay, this was a time of exile. So, if you remember, Solomon had built a temple, and it was amazing. This thing was gold and beautiful, and just unbelievable. There was nothing like it. It probably would have been one of the wonders of the world at the time. You guys remember the story? The Queen of Sheba traveled just to meet Solomon for his wisdom, and he's like showing her around the temple and stuff, right? Because it was just absolutely amazing. It's where the presence of God was. Something happened, though. It was around 580, I believe. Nebuchadnezzar, I think the second, came in. Knocked everything down, right? Took the Jews into captivity. So they were now they're coming out of a period of captivity. That's what Ezra and Nehemiah is about. They're actually rebuilding this, uh, the walls of Jerusalem and the temple. That's what's happening right now as we read, okay? So bear with me for a second. Verse 10. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord. The priests and their vestments came forward with trumpets, the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with symbols to praise the Lord according to the directions of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted, listen, with a great shout, when they praise the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Does it say the entire temple was done? Nope. What did it say? What was done? Foundation. foundation. Thank you. What are we talking about right now? Foundation. foundation. See, God brought a word to our church. I need you to listen for a moment. Because this blew me away when he explained this to me. We are laying the foundation. All these people could see at that moment. I want you to think about this. We're all standing around. Look at Nehemiah says this. People were building... It was 50%. It was the first Israeli defense force, the first idea of happened in Nehemiah. Right? Seriously. They recruited 50% of the people. Said, hey, take a spear and a sword. I can't fight. Take a spear and a sword. That's what's happening. You are a builder. You are a fighter. 
half the population became IDF. They were literally standing on the six, watching the weapons as the other people were building. You guys gonna read that in the book? Super awesome. That's how they did it, because the threat of the enemy was upon them. They wanted to destroy them, much like today. And they will always be a threat. Always. Okay? That's another discussion. They will always be a threat. So anyway, here's what they're doing. One's building, one's watching the six with weapons. And they're looking at the foundation. Now Ezra's got a different view. Ezra goes, hey, <laughs> wow, here's the foundation of the temple. Nehemiah doesn't really discuss it as much. Anyway, verse 12, but many of the priests and Levites and heads of father's houses, here's the key, they were old men. They were old men. Who had seen the first house wept with a loud voice when they saw the foundation of this house being laid, though many shouted aloud for joy. So the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping. For the people shouted with a great shout and the sound was heard far away. The sadness and the joy were mixed together, but guess what? It didn't matter. Because at the end of the day, the temple was getting built. Why were the people weeping? You ever read this? You ever thought about this? Why were these guys crying? What? Say it. They missed the glory of Solomon's temple. <laughs> From the back of the AV room. That's what's <laughs> Listen, what happened was these people had seen the glory of Solomon's temple. And they were looking at a foundation of a new church going, this doesn't look as cool. We had a coffee bar at my old church. <laughs> Come on. Come on, stand by. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. In my old church, we had an ark in the kids' area. Y'all ain't got no ark. In my old church, the men's ministry had 150 men in it. What, what's happening here? The women's ministry looked like this. I, I used to get on the stage in my old church and play on the worship team. There was 500 people in the auditorium. All looking at me. Chris is laughing. Right? Yeah, they all looked at me. It was awesome. I was performing. Dang. Listen, y'all. It's the glory of the old temple. Here's what you need to hear about this. The foundation might be smaller, but guess what happened in the new temple? The new temple was better than the old one. You know why? Say it again. It glorified God. It glorified God. That's, 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 that's the base level. What's on top of it? Do you know what happened? How did they glorify God in the new temple? Oh, well, this is great. Y'all are going to love this one. The Son of God walked into it. That never happened in the Old Temple. The veil was split in half by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, man. Let's look at it. The New Covenant. The New Covenant came in in the New Temple. The veil was split and torn, and we're all here today because of it. Come on, man. Listen, the Gentiles had no place. The Gentiles had no place in the promises of God. You have it now today because of what happened. Yeah. Stop listening. Nope. Oh, no. You see, that's, that's why I'm going to step back. That's why I'm going to step back. I'm going to step back because I know God is speaking. Here's what I think He wants you to hear. Stop looking at the old temple that you came from. Look at what He's doing here. You don't know what this church is going to be. I don't care if the foundation is small. If the presence of Jesus Christ is here and people get healed, and in 10 years, your kids go, who knows what could happen? Amen. That's the eyes you must look at this with. Amen. Not well, the old church had this and about the people and this thing. And listen, it's all good. Those are great places. Okay? But let's give God what is His while we're here. Amen. Look at what He's doing here. He has called you into the next level, He has asked you to hold a weapon. He is taking you from somewhere and said, listen, I got something I want you to be part of. Yeah. It's next level for you. If we sit back and compare this church to all the other ones, and I, I can't, there's nothing I can do, guys. We, do, we don't have full-time staff. I can't, I'm not trying to build this. There's nothing wrong with it. We just can't build it right now. Are you guys good? Yeah. He is saying, step into this. Find your place and start building. Debbie, that's what Debbie was trying to tell us two times she did it. Those blocks, two, two, two messages she had trying to get us to get this, right? Those blocks were saying, take your block, put it in the wall, build. It's a pre
privilege to build. It is a privilege to build. But it's not comfortable. It's not, it's not. Guys, it's not comfortable. It's sacrificial. This is the next place for your journey with him. Not because we're some special thing. It's because God's doing something here. He's giving us a chance to build. So if we're constantly going backwards, how can we move forward? The new temple held the presence of God. It eventually got destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. But it didn't matter because that was the place where it's, they looked at Jesus and said, this, this is the Messiah. He was 12 years old ministering in that place. I don't care if it was a camera. You know what I mean? It didn't matter what it looked like. It could have been made of nothing. A bunch of dirt and mud. Jesus walked into it. It was significant. This place is significant. We just don't know what it's going to look like. So are you guys with me? Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to build? Yeah. Let's do this. How do we build? That's the question. How do we build? What does it look like? You know, it's funny because I was challenged just recently, because sometimes we get challenged with criticism. Anybody ever get tired of criticism? <laughs> Buddy, don't take this job. <laughs> no, you do not do this job if you don't want to be criticized. So there was a critique that came. And for a minute, I let the enemy get in my head. I almost believed it for a second. <laughs> but then I backed up and said, wait a second. Let me take a look at this a little closer. What does this actually mean, right? And what does it mean for me? And what I realized, in this person's mind, it was a critique. It was a slap in my face. But when I read it, it was a compliment. Because it was a critique for them, a compliment for me. And what it means, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but what it means to me is that I am able to release ministry. Many people don't believe in that. They say, hey, dude, you're the pastor. We pay you to do it. You know, you're a pro-Christian. We're the support team. Please. That is not true. This church, and I want you to know, if you want to know the vision of this church, not to do that. If I'm up here doing five million things, and I'm a guy, and I become, you know what I become? You know, I make myself inadvertently a God. A small G God. I become your Jesus. I hate your Jesus. Okay? I'm your pastor. I guide you to him. And then I build you to do the same thing for other people. Amen. And it's going to hurt. No, you okay with that? It's going it's to hurt, guys. It, it, I'm just telling you, it's going to hurt. And if people say that's not the process, no, no, that's not what Jesus did. Yes, he did. Look at his disciples. Jesus could have, could Jesus have done it all by himself? He, buddy, he would have been the best mega church leader in the world. I mean, can you imagine Here's what would blow your mind. What if he got married and had kids? Whoa. What would that have been like? The bloodline of Jesus on the earth. That's why he didn't do it, by the way, I believe. <laughs> that couldn't happen, right? It just would have been the biggest thing. But everything that Jesus Christ did was to lead to who? The Father. Everything he did led to the Father. Everything we do must lead to the Father and not us. And it's inadvertent, guys. The leaders don't mean to do it. It's inadvertent. But we can stand up and take the glory of God very fast. We can become who everyone looks to. We're going to talk about that today. Because it happened in the Old Testament and it happened in the New. But two different decisions got made. Really cool stuff. We'll talk about it today. All right. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Sometimes you just... It's in there. Okay, at six, here we go. We're going to start really quickly with this. We're going to talk about the ministry of Jesus Christ and what that truly looks like today for us. This church, our vision is to raise up leaders. That's what we want to do. I want to raise you up. I'm already here. My job now is to raise you up. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. My job is to raise you up. My job is to Find a place for you because there's a fire that God has put in your heart. And let me tell you what happens when you've got a church full of people on fire and this guy does nothing with it. This will all burn down. <laughs> That's what happens because God's placed the fire. That's not my choice. The spirit of God put fire in your heart. Now I've got to 
find out how to engage that fire and keep it from burning the church down, right? <laughs> I want to get it into the right places. So I have to do that without fear. And I need you to do that without fear, okay? So Debbie talked about the building blocks. Great message, two times. We're going to talk about how that looks, how the building blocks actually look today inside of the church. Okay, let's start with Acts 6, verse 1. This is an interesting story. The church is huge, right? We talked about Ananias and Sapphira dying because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Like, the church is filled with power at this point. It's unbelievable what's happened. Massive mega church, probably 10,000 people in this thing. Now, here's what happens. Seven men are chosen to serve. You guys remember this story? It seems like such a weird, like, who cares? But this story is in the Bible for a very specific reason. It tells us it's a prescription for doing church today. And it actually counters some of the things that we believe. I promise you. So we'll read it. Verse 1. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, Roman church, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. Hellenists, you might know what that is. Greek speaking Jews. Greek speaking Jews, great, great job. Five points. Very, very good, right? They were Greeks. These were the Greeks, but they were Greek converts. They were like us, they were Gentiles. They were converted to the new church. And then you have the Hebrews, well, those people are, right? that's the Jews. So you're not going to believe this, but the preferential treatment was being given to the Jewish widows. And what did Jesus tell us to do with widows, by the way? Take care of them. Take care of them. Or as prescription for today, we take care of widows and orphans. Okay? So that's what he said to do. So the church was taking care of them. They were doing what they were told to do, but guess what they were doing? Well, at least the allegation probably was true. <laughs> they were taking care of the Hebrew widows first. They were getting all the best stuff. And the Greek Jews were kind of like off to the side. So they were complaining about this treatment. So the 12 did this. They summoned the full number of the disciples and said, listen, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Now, if I said that to you, all be like, that's a pride for the right? He just wants to preach and you don't want to get involved in ministry. Isn't this an interesting concept? The apostles learned something we're going to talk about in a minute. Because what we usually believe is the pastor should be everywhere at all times. And if he's not, he ain't a good pastor. Did the apostles follow that advice? Nope. They did not. But were they wrong? We'll see in a minute if they were wrong or not. The apostles were like, wait a minute, we need to do something called, big D word, delegation. Now, we look at delegation many times and go, Pastor, you get paid, man, you're full time. We need to delegate. That's your job, bro. Hold on a minute. Every job that I do that you don't do, I cheat you. I'm stealing your blessing. I am stealing your blessing when I don't do that job, but I do that job for you. Okay? And we're going to explain how that works in a minute. Listen, I am here to care, to preach, to teach, to be in your life, to do it all. I have no problem with that. But here's the thing. If I minister to every person in this church, who am I stealing that opportunity from? What about a man like Chris? Do you think Chris has an anointing on his life? Yes. yes, he does. And if I minister to everyone and don't give Chris the opportunity, guess what? He loses the opportunity. My crab is going to have a big old crown and my head's going to be like this in heaven, right? And Chris is like, hey, bro, could you share some of those jewels with me? Right? I look at Gerard, look at you guys. Look at Roy and Debbie and Gerard Carey. Yeah, there's anointing on your life. I don't want to steal what you guys can bring. So this is what they realized. They said this, therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men <clears throat> of good repute, the reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint, the name of the church, to this duty. That's why the church is called appointed. Is your appointed. Right. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, 
There they set before the apostles and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And here's what happened. Here's the result of this process. Which today we might get a little upset about. <laughs> What's the pastor doing? Right? He's being a jerk. He gets paid to do this. But here's what happened. Verse 7. And the word of God continued to increase. The number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. You know what that just said? A bunch of pastors got saved. Pastors were getting saved, man. It was like, boom. Just because, hold on for a minute. So you're telling me because seven men waited on tables that the Holy Spirit broke out? Seven men waited on tables and the apostles took a step back and let them do it. And guess what happened? The Holy Spirit broke out. Stephen, unfortunately, became a martyr. Do you guys remember that story? He got stoned to death. Because he was walking in so much power, they had to get rid of him. They had to. He, he, was, he was unbelievable at that time. He was like, it was like the power of the apostles were inside of these men. Because they were waiting tables. You guys see the system here? Okay, let's compare it to Jesus. Did Jesus do the same thing? Oh, yes, he did. He said, I'm going to teach you. You're going to walk with me. I'm going to teach you up, train you up, and I'm going to send you out. The 70, when he sent them out, did he go with them? No, we did not. He did not go with them. He sent them out. Right? This might be different than what you've heard in the past, but we have to find what is God's system? Is his system for the pastor to do everything? Or is his system to raise up other people to fill those holes? Right? So that they then become greater. I believe that's his system. And when we follow it, there is a blessing in that. There is absolute blessing in that. It says the word of God continued to increase. And disciples were multiplying. Okay, so what does this mean for our church? What does this mean for us? What is our vision? Our vision is evangelism and discipleship. Okay. And as we disciple people, we are asking you, I think, let me back up for a second. I can think about how Sandy and I got started. Um, we started a children's ministry, and then we worked on a horse ranch with foster children. I think I've talked about this to you guys. That was our first ministry. Okay, I did the foster ministry thing on the ranch for a couple of years, and we really believed that that was our future. That was the thing for us. I was like, if you told me I was going to be a pastor, I would have laughed at you hard. <laughs> I'd been like, never am I doing that in a million years. Right? And then I got called into men's ministry. Okay. It's a, it's a progression process. I started someplace and God called me to the next thing. I just kept saying yes. You don't have to, but you can say no. But I said yes, I keep moving to the next progression. That's how we started. That's what our church believes in. Let's find a place to get planned. I see people doing that. Don't think this is, I see people doing that. What I'm saying is as a church, we need to make more opportunities for people to do that. You guys all right with that? One of the, one of the things with our church, we really want our church to be, is missional. You guys know what a missional church is? That, that, that's a church that is on mission in the community. It's looking to build on mission in the community. That is a different change sometimes. Okay? Because that's like, hey man, I, I really don't want to do that on a Saturday morning. I really don't want to do that. I got enough stuff going on. I, I understand. I get it. Everybody's going to do everything. But we wanted to find places where we could plug in to make a difference. Yeah. I believe that's how we are going to build that's how God will build a church, is we're touching other people in the community. And as people come in, we are discipling them. We are raising up leaders. So leadership is a big piece of what we do. All right, I want to back up now. I want to go to Exodus 18. Start laying the plane of this. Okay, Exodus 18, we're going to start in verse 13. There it is. This is our Old Testament example. And now, I'm not just preaching to myself right now. Please understand that I am preaching to you, too. Because guess what? Yeah, some of y'all are in my position right now. You just don't know it. And some of you will be very soon. And some of you are leading ministries. Some of you are getting ready to open up house churches. And God's going to put this very heavily on your heart, I believe, because you're part of this church. This will mean something to you. And if you've never done this before, I need you to change your mind there's a Greek word for that. What is it? 
Montaneo, it means repent. <laughs> it's great. Repentance is a great gift that I have learned to embrace. And just change my mind. You know what? I'm going to change my mind on that. I'm going to change my mind on that. When I see what Jesus Christ is The church, our church, is the ministry of Jesus Christ upon this earth now. The church is that. It's the body of Christ. So we agree with Jesus. So we've got Jesus, we've got Acts, and now we have Moses of all people. What happened to Moses? Well, Moses sat in this thing called the seat of Moses. Anybody ever heard of the seat of Moses? Okay, this was awesome. All the people, the seat's just like, I don't think it was awesome. I hate to get Moses to see. Moses would literally, it'd be like me taking a chair on Saturday and being like, all right, who's got an issue? Line it up. And I'd have all y'all lined up out the door, and I'd spend 30 minutes with each couple. Minimal, probably. Okay, this church is small. That one was small. He used to do this all day. People would be lined up, and he'd be issuing, this is what you should do. This is what the Lord says. They were coming to him because he was the only mouthpiece for God. So it meant a line of people out the door, man. Okay, this is an aside. I want to prophesy to you because it's a gift that has been given me. I don't want to be the only mouthpiece of God to you. You guys okay with that? Yeah. That is not at all what I'm looking to do. I will use the prophetic gift because God has given it to me. But God will also speak to you through other people. I promise you can do that. Okay, here's what happened to Moses. The next day, Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all he was doing for the people, this is Jethro, he said, what is this that you are doing for the people? I think that's probably how he said it. What are you doing, Moses? Like, what? What? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? You see what Jethro's doing? He's confronting Moses about his behavior. He's like, dude, this is horrible delegation. I've never seen anything like this. Like, you really believe you're the only person that should be in charge here. And Moses said it to his father-in-law, well, because the people come to me to inquire of God. <laughs> what a great answer. He's like, what do you think I'm doing? I'm the mouthpiece of God, Jethro. And his father's like, father-in-law's like, listen, hold on, I know you, <clears throat> right? When they have a dispute, they come to me, and I decide between one person and another, <clears throat> and I make them known, I'm sorry, I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, what, are you do what you are doing is not good. That's a big thing to say to Moses. You guys catch that? Jethro walked up and said, the method you are using is wrong. This is not appropriate. You, it's just you out here. Okay. <clears throat> you and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. alone. Now obey my voice. I will give you advice, and God be with you. You shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. And you shall warn them about the statutes and laws and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do. Moreover, look for able men, this is important, from all the people. Same thing the Church of Acts did. Men who fear God, same word, I think trustworthy, hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. <clears throat> Every great matter... They shall bring to you, but in a small matter, they shall decide themselves. This way it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It ain't on you. People have to bear the burden with you. This is good advice for your business. This is good advice for work. Okay. I would even say this is good numerical advice. That's why we're together. Right? Good marital advice. So now we have, if you do this, God will direct you. You will be able to endure, and all this people also will go to their place in peace. This system creates peace because everybody gets peace, right? We all get to do a peace. It creates peace. It's silly. I may go over that. I don't know. Right? Like, it, it, this creates peace in the people. 
when all of us are engaged as one team, one body of Christ. This is what Moses had to learn. Because in our nature, a lot of times, especially if you're a type A leader, why have any type A leaders in the room? Oh, no, that's better. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, no, we have a lot. We got several type A leaders, right? Thank you for raising your hand. If you're a type A leader, you're going to tend to want to get it done. In your business, in your marriage, in work, in your ministry. Huh? Oh, okay. No, it's okay. We'll talk later. Yeah, so, if, especially if you're a ministry leader. Do you know it's no different for ministry leaders? When we have ministry, we become type A. And we're like, this is what's going to happen. So, I want you to know something. When I open up the church for conversation, I think that makes people feel weird. I even had someone suggest that maybe I don't, like, I need help. <laughs> Guys, I know the vision of this church very, very well. I know exactly what God has told me. You know why I open the church up to speak sometimes at the end? I want you to join me in it. You understand? I want you to join me in it. Not just me yelling orders to you. I want your heart to join me. And that's what happens when we do that. That's why I like to do that. I like to be joined in what I'm doing. Not just dictate to you what's going to happen. So Moses learned a lesson. This lesson was carried on. The apostles took from history and they said, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to open up um, the aperture, so to speak, so other people can have positions. Now, what does this mean for your personal ministry? Think about this. If you're doing ministry, what does this mean? It means you need to get some help. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you one thing you should be doing. I don't mean this in a negative way. I have to be doing this too. We're always looking for the next person to raise up. We should be walking around constantly going, not so much how can I do this, who are the next people that are going to take my ministry? Who are the next people that are going to branch out from what I'm doing? That is a big piece of our church. It's not that we want you to stop doing it. We want you to multiply. Multiplication is crucial. To do that, you've got to find people who will come alongside you, the people you can join ministry with. Because I will tell you this, God is good. He'll let you keep going but he will let you drive yourself all the way into the ground. Yeah. And I've seen pastors, churches literally eat pastors alive. And they don't mean to do it. They're not trying to do it. But the pastor just keeps doing everything. They're like, all right, buddy, good job. You know? And it's like, pastor's going to be over here all day. Everything we're doing, he better be here. And the pastor's got kids, and the kids are losing out, and the marriage falls apart, and it's a nightmare. I know you don't want that for me, right? And I don't want that for you. So we work together, right? If God has placed on your heart to lead and do something, can I suggest that you do it? Please do it. There's a reason he's asking you to do it. Please do it. Step into that call. We're here to help facilitate that. All right. So it's 11 o'clock. What does our church need? So Terrence, if you can put our last slide up. Come on. Getting excited. I can go to 12, but I don't even think so. <laughs> The vision of the church makes me excited. I have no confusion about it. I'm excited about it. it we're not trying to be some like break off road church. It's not what we're doing. We're just saying, why don't we go back and just keep it real simple? Why don't we go back to simplicity? What was the ministry of Christ? Can we replicate the ministry of Jesus Christ? Let's see where we're at. Okay, what do we need? <clears throat> I'll have to turn it around. You know what? I got this on paper. Hold on, let's see. I actually threw this one out. Okay, what are the needs for appointed church? Now we have some needs and we have some opportunities. <laughs> some things we need people to do, like really need you to help them, okay? As you guys know, um, AB team is part of our worship team. And we are in a rebuilding time for the worship team, okay? We it just, we had one, but we didn't have one. It's very rapid. So Chris is coming and we are rebuilding, all right? Terrence, as Chris says, and he's right, is doing the job of five people. You ever do that in your workplace? Does that feel good? Is that a good boss that lets you do that? No. So right now, leadership is not doing a good job with Terrence. So what we need to do is help him. He needs help. Does anybody have to raise your hand? But I want you to think about this. Do you have this kind of experience? Uh, one thing Terrence needs, the biggest thing really, is the slides. You know how hard it is to do slides and try to run sound? Like, it's extremely difficult. 
Uh, pro presenter is demon possessed or something. I don't, I, dude, I'm telling you that program is unbelievable. This is what we got to use, okay? And he needs help with slides so he can focus on sound. And eventually, we may need some other help too. But right now, Terrence, this is what we discussed, okay? Is someone or pro presenter so we can focus on sound. You guys remember last Sunday when Chris just knocked it out of the park on worship? Did you know we had a bad guitar cable? Chord wrench, right? Yeah. You're teaching us this, Chris. Chord oh, wrench, chord wrench. Five points for me, thank you. So a quarter inch cable was bad. That's what happened up there. You know why we didn't know? Because Terrence is so busy entering slides and doing all the stuff. He's got a new pre church. He went to Henry time to check. We wouldn't be able to find that. Um, so anyway, I'm just saying that's why we it's a need for us. We need that help. Somebody that can help Terrence. And then somebody, Terrence, can eventually raise up to where they can do that job. Okay, volunteer help with children's ministry, back and their children's ministry. We've had a lot of people helping out of that, so it's been great. Please don't hear me. No condemnation. No, no, great on that. Um, but if you'd be interested in maybe helping, maybe one Sunday a month or something like that, you'd be willing to go in there, that'd be awesome. So that's a need we have. Uh, youth ministry. Okay, this is big. <laughs> Moment Tierney, we're back here. They lead our youth ministry. Um, we need help with the youth ministry, okay? And that could be in the form of host homes. I've talked about that, where you'd be wanting to like, let the kids come over and do an event. We've got a little five-acre farm, so we've offered that to them. Um, but I think they could also use help with someone actually jumping into the youth ministry. If someone's like, you know, I wouldn't mind being a part of the youth ministry, that would be great, because I know volunteering could use that. Um, if those are anything else you want to say about that, you're sitting right here, about your needs. No, uh, you know, obviously my, my wife's pretty busy with the kids, so, you know, that's what's Too, so that female leader. Oh, that's okay, that's terrific. So female leader specifically, and volunteer doing a great job. Terry is a very busy woman right now, all right, and rightfully so. So we can use some help in the youth ministry. And like it might not be all the time, but here's what I know about youth ministry. Even with a simple model church, you've got to have something for the youth. You have to because people if they've got nothing for their kids, and I understand, man, they're they're like I can't. Can't do this, right? There's nothing for my kids. What do my kids do? So we want a really healthy balance of kids being able to sit in church and hear the message, or go to night and hear the message, um, or be part of a youth program. We're, we don't believe in just let the kids run around. We are trying to engage the kids, but we have to build this. So we have a tremendous need. You guys, good with that? Yeah. All right. Event planning team. <clears throat> this is Amber, Sandra, and Tara so far have stepped up to do this, and this is yeah. really cool. Kelly as well. I'm sorry, Kelly's supposed to be on there as well. Kelly, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> I don't know who's all part of all the teams right now, but we need to get this locked down um, because I actually think this is going to be really neat. So we have community days. These are people who are willing to help set up community days. Um, I'm seeing events for our kids out here, kickball games, different things like that that we can do. Um, also events that we can open up out of the community and events we can open up here for the community for some things that we've talked about. Or outreach potentials, but somebody's got to, somebody's got to do that. <laughs> somebody's got to help with that. Like this whole thing for the next community day with barbecue and all this stuff. Somebody's got to call the barbecue place. <laughs> Somebody, by the way, someone made a relationship. It was you, Natalie. I'm not sure who made the relationship, um, but this guy's giving us free foods. He's a Christian. Like that's what we're talking about. Every Sunday, yeah, but it, but that, somebody's got to do that, right? Somebody's got to go meet this guy and try to get us hooked up with food, and they did that. Right up in front of the liquor shop. So what are our opportunities here? What are like ministry team opportunities? Small bite. We're going to get more, but this is a small bite. Okay. Evangelism. Anybody have a heart for reaching out to the community? Okay. Listen, I want to explain something about evangelism. We've got a couple over here. Okay. No, let's do it. Let's put something together, guys. We're not going to say no. Um, evangelism is one of those things where I think when you say the word, people break out in a cold sweat. I used to. Because what I thought it was is you had to get a box and stand up like in the corner by the courthouse, or the, you know, you read scripture, the, the thing, you know, the more. That could be, okay. That's not so much what we're thinking of, <laughs> okay. Uh, we're thinking about like a community outreach um, and finding places. We used to do the Winthrop Market 
That was a straight up evangelism outreach. That's what that was. I know, and so that's why I'm saying we want to see other people that want to get involved, okay? So we got to find the people that have the heart for it, because some people just don't. It's just not something. That's how we're not staying in the church. I know, see, and, and we prayed for hundreds of people. They might not be at the church, but it doesn't matter. We still pray for more people. We heal. I mean, it, it was great. So that's an evangelistic guy. Somebody's got to plan it. We've got to get a team of people that want to do that kind of thing, okay? That's what we're asking for. So if you would like to be involved in evangelism, please, that is an opportunity we want to build. All right, outreach. Some of y'all probably have some awesome ideas for reaching out into the community. Does anybody know anybody that needs help? People that need help, like, man, no one's doing anything for these people. Okay, I happen to believe that that is actually the church's responsibility. At a certain level, okay? I know that is, people have different views on that. I actually believe that is what the church is created for. That's one of our jobs, is to reach out to those people. Okay, so maybe you can build. Maybe you're good like the woodwork. Maybe you're good with, I don't know, whatever it is. But we need people who are willing to say, I will reach out. We will go out and help somebody in need. We, bandwidth, understanding bandwidth, that we can't try to do this. You know, people have lives they got to live to. We don't want to hurt your children and all that stuff. But if you would like to go help somebody, you know, we need somebody who's willing to put together a team, even, to reach out. What does that look like? You'd just be bringing food. Would you be willing to bring food to somebody? A lot of us are. You know, some of us are like, hey, yeah, man, let's go. And you know, other people are like, hey, I, I would rather do this. This is what I feel called to. That's fine. But I want if you, if you want to bring food to people, it's great. Jim Costa leading a prayer ministry. Look at what, okay, Jim is a great example of what I just read. If you, just kept, if you know Jim, he's an example of what happened in Acts. It's seven men that were chosen. All we asked Jim to do was come over here and pray for 20 minutes before church. Did you know that? And then all of a sudden I look up here and Jim's bringing the word of God. I'm like, that's awesome. That's what I'm talking about, man. You know what I mean? It just happened organically. Jim's open in church every morning now. You see the steps? He just says yes to one thing, then he says yes to the next thing. What's it going to be next? I don't know. It's going to be something, right? It's going to be cool, whatever it is. This is an example of the seven men chosen from Acts. He stepped into something. I want you to know you have that ability here. We want to give you that ability, okay? All right, <clears throat> house churches. Here's a really cool one because Dan and Chrissy Hartzog have just stepped into uh, opening another house church. So I'm going to let them speak, not today, but we're going to get some time for them to speak about this and what that's going to look like. But they've offered to open their house up to disciple people. That is a huge thing. So now we've got Jeff and Lil, and we've also got Dan and Chrissy. Uh, and across, uh, we got one in Ruston, right? And then one in Riverview. So we've got different areas. What's that? I don't know if they know that yet. You we know? prefer Tuesdays. We're Tuesday nights. Tuesdays just to work with our kids' schedule. Um, we're going to start in a couple of weeks. We're going to do weekly, and then we're going to straight to bi-weekly when school starts. We can make a teacher, and we can make a teacher for our kids. Um, so we'll, we'll, let, we'll let you know the details. We'll do it. We'll see. Yep. And that's going to come. I'm going to let them work through that and pray through that, and that will be over for people to go. Um, Dan has been an executive pastor at two churches. Okay. Trust me, they are a deep well. It will be a place that you can go and learn about Jesus Christ and be ministered to. All right, that's what we're looking for. So this is a big thing that they're wanting to open their home up and to give you some of what they have inside of them. That's awesome. And eventually we'll have some more. A uh, couple led by Mike and Coral Shepherd. That's another one for marriages. I'm going to let them speak on that when they're back in. I don't want to get too much into it. But really what they're looking to do is not marriage counseling. They're looking to just really kind of do marriage, like life together with married couples. Like fun stuff as well as having time to sit down and have conversations. Uh, but I'll let them talk more about that when they're back. And lastly, freedom. My Gus and Alice in the back. That's on Wednesday nights, 6.30. Uh, we, have, we have some people that attend freedom, and I, I, it's been great. I try to come when I can. Um, it is terrific. Uh, this is something that Gus and Alice, I know their heart is to build this and to raise up leaders. That's why I like it, because I know what they're trying to do. They want people who can lead in this, who can lead and walk people through prayer, ministering prayer for freedom. Do you guys like to say anything else about that, Gus? No, is that it? Okay. And <clears throat> that's where that's going. And so if you want to be part of freedom, um, I'll be able to show up Wednesday nights at 6 30. Uh, I also want to say this about outreach and evangelism. 
these are kind of interesting concepts because we can use things that we already naturally do to reach out to people. Do you know that? What are you into? What's your hobby? Right? Um, we're kind of a group of hunters. So we use hunting, hunting conversations, time in the woods. We use it with each other and with other people. You might, you might hunt, are there any hunters in the room? Yeah. I mean, can you not see meet Jesus in a tree stand? Yeah. Climber? No, for real. Like, it's, sometimes people want to go to the woods, we're going to come to church. <laughs> you know what? I mean, you can meet with Jesus out there. <laughs> um, and so we use that, right? We use that as an evangelistic ministry opportunity. Uh, you fish. It's another hobby. There's a way to meet with guys. Maybe you ride motorcycles. Okay, you know, maybe you didn't. Right? These are things we can use to reach people because it's natural intersections in life. That makes it easy. So think about that kind of stuff. Pray about it. Those are our needs and those are our opportunities. That's a good start. There was more. Um, there are some ministries I looked at it together that I really liked, um, which are getting pretty deep. And they are ministries where you literally are discipling people coming out of prison, discipling uh, women who have been trafficked. Um, there's some cool, there's actually a ministry I really loved, which is for homes where children are getting ready to be removed from the home. And this ministry goes in, and they actually bring the church into that, into that home to try to keep that from happening. To try to like walk with those folks and help them with parenting skills and various things so that children don't get removed. Okay. Pretty cool. There's some, I'm not saying we're jumping into that right now, but these are some things that we are available for. Um, all right, so guys, that is what I have for today. I'd like to go ahead and um, just end in prayer. If that's okay, instead of doing a QA today, we're just going to go ahead and end in prayer. And my prayer is focused and targeted that if you are here, that God will maybe put some of this on your heart. And that it would be very clear to you that right now there's nothing which is fine. Or, hey, you know what? Why don't you think about this? Okay? Uh, ways that we can engage as a church and grow. All right, so I'm going to pray. Lord God, we thank you, Father. Lord, thank you that uh, this church isn't all about me. Um, thank you so much for that. Thank you that this church is about your people. It's about your bride. It's about the bride of Christ. It's about the people who are sitting in front of me. It is about them. <clears throat> Lord God, help us, to, help us to just love and cherish the things that we knew from our old churches and not to dishonor, but to honor that, but to receive the new things that you want to do, and to just fully engage our heart in what you're doing here in your building process, and let you do it. So Lord God, I pray, Father, that you would just open our, our heart, everyone that is seated here, Lord, would you speak to them through the Holy Spirit about the needs of a point of church and ministry opportunities, and would you please... Uh, in direction. If it's not time, let them know it's not time. But if it is time, would you light their heart on fire to take the next step? Show them the faces of the people, show them the ministry. We've got to thank you. Um, Father, I, <laughs> I speak right now in the name of Jesus against fear, against rejection, a lot was rejected by the church before. I'm not good enough to do this. I'm in a bad place. Jesus just wants a relationship with you. He's asking that you submit your life to him and not be perfect. He meets you right where you're at. If you need that moment, just pray. Ask those that Lord, I surrender. I'm not perfect. I surrender to you. Meet me right where I'm at. And just know that his love and his grace is sufficient for you right now in this moment. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Not one bit. 